It's 6.30. We have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. And you here for general information, Tom? Or just to, just to listen? Just to listen. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, well, we have nothing, no special firm, no public hearings scheduled. Uh, well, actually, want to continue. We're going to continue uh, the, uh, well, that's a six, that's a 645. Yeah, might as well let it go until that. Right. Okay. Um, I got a couple of bills to pay. We got an invoice for our Daily Hampshire Gazette for $334.70 for the Henderson um what you call it special permit for the accessory apartment um next in in uh, two weeks how much was that 334.7 motion to pay second any discussion all in favor aye 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 anybody opposed motion passes four to zero with one absent uh, then we have an invoice for Pioneer Valley Planning Commission for a period of 10-1 um, through 12-31 for $1,630.64. Okay, what was that? 10-1? Ten, 10-1 ten one. Ten one through 12-31. Uh, motion to pay. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 401, absent. And then I don't know if we ever approved this one. We may not have, we might have, I might have missed this. My fault. From 7 1 through 9 30. No, we did uh, vote to approve that on November 3rd. Oh, we did. Okay. I just forgot to submit it. Thank you. And probably while we're at it, before I forget so it doesn't get too late, approve our payroll for the period of, for the first quarter of this year. Um, motion to uh, approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 4-0, one absent. Okay, so uh, Colony Drive, Lot 8, Yeah, the, the uh, owner is asking for a release of Lot 8 for a pending sale. The um, It is an eight-lot subdivision. We have previously released four. This will be five. And uh, two of them are being held, two of them remain held, one for security for the development of the parcel and one as security for the resolution of the affordable housing. Okay. So there will be, with this release, there will still be one, one open lot and there is a second lot that was under contract is no longer under contract and could be put back under covenant. So we, we still have, at the moment we have three lots. Uh, there are three lots that are under covenant. Okay. The one that could be put back, are they gonna put it back bill? They're just gonna hold it and sell it as they want. I think at the moment they're just going to hold on to it. But if it turns out that somebody, depending on what other lots people end up wanting, uh, they could swap it. They could swap it for okay. one of the others. Okay. So we need a motion to to release lot. What number? Not lot eight. Lot eight. I'll and I'm not participating. I'll approve the release of lot eight. You make the motion. I'll second it. Okay. We have motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And Bill, you Abstain. are not participating. Right. M motion passes 4-0 with one abs abstention. 
I, I'm sorry, I was muted. I was asking who's, who's development because I, I didn't vote because I didn't know what I was voting on. My fault for entering late and being col muted. Colony Drive off of Shattuck Road. Oh, okay. All right, you can put me down as the fourth. It sounded like you, we have enough uh, options. Okay. Um, Mr. Reedy wants an extension to the next meeting, Bill? Uh, he was asking for an extension to uh, the next meeting, yes. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, maybe it'd be wiser just to offer the first uh, meeting in March. Okay, that would be March 2nd. Okay. So, you know, I guess we can, um, I did have it on the agenda for seven or six. 45, but I also had it noted as to be continued. Um, so I think it probably wouldn't uh, <clears throat> offend anything if we were to vote to continue it. Yeah, there's, okay. So I'll, uh, so what, what number is that? Uh, 97 Russell. I'll make a motion to continue to uh, the first February, first March meeting, which is uh, second. March 2nd. March 2nd, yes. Uh, that request to the applicant. I would second the second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. aye. Anybody opposed? Motion passes unanimously. I guess we can go with you, Ken. Great. Uh, good evening, board. Um, so just to confirm, did you receive the documents that I shared on Thursday? We did. Okay, great. Um, so since the last meeting, there were some uh, minor updates based on our last conversation. Um, I think the biggest one was section 13.7 the proposed language was in that second document. And I'll go ahead and, and um, if you don't mind, Bill, um, letting me share. Sure. Let's see, share screen, advanced sharing, <clears throat> all participants. There you go. Great. Um, which one is this? Okay, so um, this basically would replace 13.7. And if you recall, 13.7 is the section which provided for the development regulations um, for use by special permit, um, where, where initially it was for mobile residential uses, which had a, a different definition than um, I think one would probably um, understand. And um, according to the um, FEMA coordinator um, for the state, um, it was, it needed some clarification and understanding what the town has been allowing or, you know, what is currently happening in town. Those are recreational vehicles that are in those particular areas. Um, so knowing that, um, Whereas in the previous version of this draft, recreational vehicles happen to be um, in the section 13.6, which was specific to use regulations and variances. But now since based on our last conversation that there would be a requirement for um, a special permit to be issued by the zoning board, um, this is where this entire section is specific to recreational vehicles and how 
the um, ZBA would oversee um, a review process. Um, and it doesn't change any of the language that you put, um, what, that you initially had. Um, I just moved some items around and basically removed any instance of the, um, the language with regards to mobile residential uses. I did share this with the FEMA coordinator and um, she said this, it, it, it's fine um, based on how it's, um, it was drafted. So, you know, I foresee that this would be in the section of 13.7. Um, with regards to all the other changes, I didn't- Just on, on that point, uh, sure. so the definition of recreational vehicles will stand as one axle trailer has, could be, has to be able to be towed by a pickup that will be remain in there, correct? Yes, let me, um, I'm just gonna quickly um, share this next, which is I, the- um, I, I thought she said that we could in no way have an RV in the floodway. The fact that a recreational vehicle it was specific to the language that you previously had, um, which because it was listed as a mobile residential use, which also included other types of uses, which okay. could contain a permanent foundation. Gotcha. She was fine with using the FEMA de definition of recreational vehicle, which okay. Joe, I've um, shared on this screen. This would be added to the um, definition section. Um, as you'll note by the um, blue underline. So everything in the draft that you have um, shows what's gonna be added, what's gonna be removed based on some of those. Um, so that's still one trailer per lot. Yeah, we, we do suggest in the, um, it, it didn't change with regards to um, here, uh, one mobile resident, or, oh, it didn't need to be changed. Um, one recreational vehicle. Now, Bill, are you satisfied with that? Uh, sure. You know, my, my, my recollection is that back at the time we were drafting this, RVs referred to what are now customarily called all-terrain vehicles or ATVs. Um, I don't think we, we didn't have sort of a, there, there wasn't a, an overarching term for trailers and campers. And, uh, um, and I think that, uh, yeah, my recollection is that recreational vehicles had sort of a different term, at the, a di different connotation at the time. Okay, but also you were saying that a special permit would be in the floodway and anything out of the floodway would be uh, handled by the building inspector. Yeah, so we, we may want to still have, uh, do we have some language in here that um, so we do want to have so, some permitting, yeah. discretionary permitting language in the building inspector? Yeah, so I don't know if this particular section that I've highlighted in blue suggests that. Recreational okay. vehicles are permitted in the floodplain, but prohibited in the floodway, except for by special permit by the ZBA. So. Well, that takes care of the floodway, but we're talking the other areas alongside the river that are not in the floodway. And there's quite a bit that's not in the floodway because it is at a higher elevation. So what the, the model I think we were working with was that in the floodplain, where you are not otherwise allowed to build a house, you could move uh, 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 move in your your recreational vehicle, but with the with approval from the building inspector. And wasn't there a comment that the unless the building inspector was an engineer, they wanted to see they wanted us to have a letter from a professional engineer. There is a comment. Um, it was the establishment of the district. And so understanding, um, let me share this screen. 
Because I, I, I thought I saw a comment that they didn't. Yeah, it, it's this comment here, um, which we're removing. And I'm, it, it suggests that. Okay, right. Yeah, so we're just removing it. The, okay. Where there was a question about interpreting, uh, interpreting okay. where a floodplain and what those boundaries looked like. And, and, and who, and, and Ken, who tells us if there's a flood danger? What's that? Who tells us that? I, I'm assuming FEMA. I don't know the answer to that. Well, you got it there, and that's that's when people have to act when you got flood danger. And who, who makes that determination? Well, it's it's usually the fire chief uh, makes that determination according to the emergency management uh, team that we have in Hadley. <laughs> and I and believe the fire chief is the emergency management coordinator. Correct. So he that, would make, that makes sense. Yeah. So we should say as determined by the emergency coordinator in town? I don't think we have to put that in. No. I don't know. Yeah, I, I want to be careful about putting Mem in. Remember Alexander Haig? I'm in charge here. <laughs> yeah, you want to be careful not to, uh, to put in too, too specific a term, only to find that uh, yeah. it, the, it, the feds have changed the, the term at okay. some point, and we're yeah. no longer in compliance. So I, I think that Mark made the point with regards, I, I think I'm losing my- um, About the flood way, yeah. Yes, so I think because the building inspector who is serving as the community floodplain administrator, and I know um, Tom is on the call. If there's anything that you wanna chime in, Tom, um, please do. But I think that because of that, any final sign off would be by the building department. So whether or not a RV, there, there, there is, I guess it's whatever type of permitting process the building department would need to go through to ensure that it was also with regards to building department items, if there was um, a sign off for um, just because the building department serves as the community floodplain administrator and would basically allow that use in the floodplain. Well, we're kind of taking him away from the engineering aspect of it because there were basically two choices. Uh, you could have a recreational vehicle that is mobile for 180 days, or if you wanted to build something permanent, then you're getting involved with the Conservation Commission, then you're getting involved with elevation above the flood, 100 year flood of record, then you have to have anchoring mechanism, blah, blah, blah. So that's, that's a little different. We're, we're going kind of the easier path of 180 days. So if you hear of a flood threat, you just can pull it out of there quickly. So tomorrow night is there's going to be a, a committee that we put together to help um, and hopefully can join, you know, the next meeting, which includes somebody from conservation, the fire chief, um, ZBA member, and any, because Mike has a, uh, chief has a big concern on propane tanks and all that, how we can, you know, have all that on record in order to, yep. to go through this. Yep. Now, the question, Tom, is that do we put it in the bylaw or do we put it in uh, the building inspector's uh, checklist? Checklist. I, I, th I think it's more appropriate. If we put it in a bylaw, it becomes too yeah, hard it, and fast it, and there's it, no wiggle room. Yeah. And to, to let's say we put words in there to satisfy the fire chief. And after two or three permits, he finds out he missed something. Now you got to go back to town meeting to change it. Correct. Whereas if he put it in the purview of the appropriate yeah. inspecting departments, then they can say, hey, we also need this. And it's not going to be a humongous task to add certain things to it or to take it away if they find out that it's not necessary. That makes sense, definitely. Yeah. I mean, you want to make this 
comprehensive, but we also, we got, so, we got so much interest in doing this. If we make it too cumbersome, nobody's going to go back to doing it. And we're going to be right back where we started. You know, we're, 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 we're going to have the laws on a book that's going to be difficult to enforce. So we want to put something in there that they can utilize. So we do have that erosion and sediment control permit bylaw, right. which is not a special permit, not a variance. It's just a permit. Um, so if, ideally, if we could have language in there that uh, locations in the flood plain will be by <laughs> permit from the building inspector who may adopt regulations. Yeah. That, 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 that's, those, are, those, those sound like good words, Bill. So that would be in your general bylaw. because well, I think we might want to have, see, I want to just be clear in the zoning bylaw that it's not a free for all in the flood plain. It's still one trailer per lot. And in compliance with the building department, <laughs> state building codes, um, so you're part of the water protection and concom well, that's a good point mark concom is got to got to weigh in on it they're going to have some some say too but, but you know let's say somebody has a large lot down there and there are six recre recreational vehicles parked there and a, a warning is issued about a flood and they're all damaged and tipped over and the person that owns it said to hoe it. I'm going back to uh, West Springfield. And just leave it there. You have no recourse at all. So I think the surety bond has to follow the landowner and not the vehicle owner. Hmm. Yeah, I think if you do that, then the landowner can choose to. Exactly. The landowner has they to be can pass it along to the vehicle owner, but ultimately if the vehicle owner defaults, we have the landowner to. Does, does that language have to be included in the bylaw or can it be understood? Like if somebody doesn't pay their taxes, you can put a loop. <laughs> well, in. because you know, if, if you put it on the vehicle owner, they're not gonna do it. But if you tell the landowner that he, you want a surety and he doesn't give you one, then you put a lien on his land. Yeah, that, that makes a lot more sense than, than on a vehicle owner. Definitely. That's that, that's that's like how we do contracts in in construction. We have no no contractual impact on the subcontractor. We have a contract with the contractor, so we put everything on the on the prime contractor. And you know, in this case, we have little leverage. You know, there's no taxes paid to us or anything by the vehicle owner. So yeah, it totally makes sense. So one other variation, and this may be a compromise that'll sweeten the pot for some people, is that we could have one, um, one RV per lot with uh, permit with subject to permitting from permitting from the building inspector uh, in the floodplain. Flood way, you have to have a ZBA, and to have more than one per lot, you'd have to have the ZBA. Well, what if the lot's frontage, say, on the river is a quarter of a mile? It's equal to six lots, then you could have exactly, six. exactly. We have to. Well, if somebody what? wants to go and survey, just... well, okay, Mike, the thing is, the lots that are existing down there are grandfathered. If someone, depending on how much frontage someone oh. had, if they wanted to survey out a portion of their lot and approval not required plan, God bless them. But if they try to slice them up, uh, slice a large parcel up the way the little parcels are sliced up, we wouldn't sign off on the plan. It'd be non-conforming. That's, that's what I thought. That's a good point, Bill. So... I'm just thinking that there are, pro uh, you know, we, we do get some pressure that people want to get together with their friends. And frankly, I don't think that is all that no. big a deal if no. the site supports it. Uh, well, you recall Mencken's definition of a Puritanism, the haunting fear that someone somewhere is having is happy. 
you know, having fun, having fun is happy. Yeah. And, you know, they just don't want people to have fun without having to jump through a lot of hoops. And that's uh, what we're trying to do. We're trying to minimize. I know, I know. We're, we're trying to simplify it. And I don't see how this thing can get simplified. Well, that brings me to the point uh, before I forget, Ken, in 1974-75, when uh, the original FEMA was presented to the town, there were three sanctions that they told me to emphasize, that if the town did not pass it, you could not get a mortgage from a federally insured lending institution, which are basically all banks. Uh, you could not uh, get a, uh, let's say, flood insurance. And the other thing is you could not get any federal money and that happened to be for the sewer line in the uh, floodplain from the from the Coolidge Bridge down to the uh, the, the commons. And uh, now, what if the town does not approve it, or what if people ask that questions at the town meeting? What if we don't approve it? What are the sanctions against us now? So that's my question to you, Ken. There were three definite sanctions in in the initial. FEMA regulations. What are the um, sanctions now? It would, it could possibly, and I, I think the word is could, um, disqualify the town from, I, similar to the um, items that you discussed about sanctions, um, disqualify the policyholders from holding flood insurance through the National Flood Insurance Program. Um, I have some language that I think is in the fact sheet. You yeah. said possibly, not probably. You said possibly, right? Possibly. Probably. And and the thing is, what's going to end up happening is if you don't have a compliant bylaw and eventually you're found that the town is not compliant with FEMA regulations, I'm sure the state will be coming to it assist and insist that the bylaw get amended as soon as possible. Um maybe in a special town meeting, I don't know. But I think it's going to be a reactive thing, just kind of understanding the conversation that I had with the coordinator that they don't want policyholders to lose their policy. So they're going to continue working to ensure compliance with the FEMA regulations. Um, and and what, if, what if we've got a perfect bylaw on the books and we've got many, uh, several perfect bylaws on the books and are not enforced. Well, that's, that's not Ken's problem. Tom is- No, but I'm just telling them. I mean, you know. Well, the other thing, Ken, uh, you mentioned the number of houses at the last meeting that uh, qualified for federal flood insurance and who had mortgages. Was it 170 or, or is that too high? No, I think it was less than that. Um, it was in the 80s. I think it was 80s or 90s. Um, maybe Bill was, told us that 10% of his closing had federal insurance, left flood insurance. I, I know where to look um, to get that exact number. But you're, Joe, I think, you know, as you, as the board will be presenting this at town meeting, understanding these very specific questions and these, the nuance of passing this, like disqualifying all of the policyholders if we can get those exact numbers, that's gonna be very important for the education component, you know, to, to inform the community. Um, you, you, yeah, but yeah. but you, 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 you can get a mortgage from a non-federally insured bank. You can go up to Lee Bank and get one. I mean, well, there are two of them, three of them that will also accept, uh, if you're not federally insured uh, and it's a privately held bank. Uh, you can they, go to Rocket Mortgage. Yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Well, Ken, back back to the presentation, and this is probably mentioning to Jim, who's going to have to present it. This bylaw with the trailers is not very different than what we had previously, and we're just complying with the uh, the state people, and we are putting in. Let me see the the we must have in our bylaw the severability clause that's in disclaimer of liability clause that is in and the greater restriction and that is in 
So we are complying with that language and uh, that doesn't make any difference really, but it, it just says it's in the bylaw. Yeah, I think, you know, the, the, the thing is that there are some added components and, you know, in the draft that was shared with you, the items that are blue and underlined, those are the added components. So severability, you, you named it, liability, yeah. uh, I, identification of the community floodplain administrator, that's now required. Um, the abrogation word is not required either, I, I would guess. Yeah, I I'm mean, gonna... go ahead. Um, th th this is language from the model, and this was yes. suggested by the the coordinator. So I didn't necessarily create any additional. No, you know. but that was when you send out the original documents from the model bylaw, and that it it there was kind of an underline must have in in the adopted bylaw those three things that I just mentioned. So you put them in, and we're comfortable with that. But from the presentation to the town meeting to Jim is that. This is not much different than we've had in the past, except there's a few minor nuances that uh, are added to comply with the rules and regulations. So right. it should, mean, and it, it shouldn't be a a tough sell if we mention it that way. And to Mike's question is that it's probably going to be enforced now because I know the Conservation Commission is on it and. Uh, the building inspector is well informed. So I think I think the head of the conservation commission said this is very cumbersome. It's becoming very cumbersome. And what it, didn't she? Didn't she, Tom? Well, cumbersome. They they're not going to allow anything within two hundred feet. So if somebody wants to bring a recreational vehicle in and they cut down the some trees within two hundred feet of the river, they're violating the. Uh, no, she's, I think she was suggesting the permitting process has become, would become cumbersome. It's now it's, it's, it's almost going to be easier. Yeah. We're, we're, we're lowering the threshold for permitting exactly right. to the, the permits are going to be for the people who want to be in the floodway. And if they want to be in the floodway, so almost by definition, they're within 200 feet of the river. So they're under conservation yeah. commission jurisdiction too. Psst. So, so what happens if I've got a recreational vehicle and it's been parked at my house until, say, July 3rd? And I said, ah, I'm going to pull it down the river for about a week and a half. And I bring it in and I bring it out. Does that vehicle need a permit? I would say yes. Depends on where you put it. Yeah. Um, you know, I so suppose think... there's, there's probably yeah, my a point an overnight exception there's there's a i don't think anyone's going to be looking for for the one weekend violator but um you know it gets pulled you get it down there and you leave it there um uh, then i think you have, yeah you trigger you trigger the low the lowest requirement at least that yeah. you get a permit you, you tell the building inspector who you are, how to, how, to, how to reach you, and you tell the fire right. chief how many propane tanks you have. Um, so, how do, so how does Tommy enforce that? Does he have to you know, put into his daily exercise routine that he's going to go down and go along the, you know, the coastline? Or do we know. Has, has anyone here ever gone down there and uh, looked at the trailers, the RVs? I never have. I mean, if you told me there were a bunch of them down there, you know. We don't have the authority to go and look at them, but I've driven down, I've been on the river when they've had the vehicles on the river. It, it ha I've been on a river in probably over 10 years. Uh -huh. But 10 years ago, there was a lot of RVs along the river. And they were sometimes packed side by side, five to eight on a, on a, on a lot. So, so we're saying then that Mitch's Marina will have to put the bond up and not the 30 vehicles that are down there. Is that correct? That would be correct. That's the way we're saying the owner of the okay. property, of the land owner. Yeah, good. Well, that's going to be a tough one. How many is he allowed? One per lot. 
Yeah. If he wants to put more than that, we need to discuss about Bill's idea of going to the ZBA for a special permit. Now, doesn't he have, uh, doesn't Mitch have uh, a court decree for X number of part of yes, yes. campers? Yeah. Seven or nine was the, uh, the one, the yeah, number, I probably think. Probably got 20 down there. So at at least. least. Yeah. How many? 20. No, I don't. I don't think Bill is advocating that you have to go to the ZBA to get uh, a trailer park. Uh, we don't want that. No, no. I think that that's correct. I, yeah, no, we don't want a trailer no. park. That's the one per lot. But we have one or more lots that have our grandfather will say, or they have a, a court court ruling. But remember, grandfathering is just in zoning. It is not in conservation. That's correct. That's a good point. And um, you know, it may end up that that that's going to be the more more effective uh, regulatory tool. Then they start looking at who's who's that between conservation and board of health. Uh, you know, the the six campers on a quarter acre by the uh, by the river may raise issues for Board of Health, Fire Department, and Conservation Commission more than they do for the Planning Board. Good so do we, go ahead, Mike. Do we have any idea how many lot, quote unquote lots would currently be, that, that are put, have, allowing vehicles there would be affected by this? How many, any idea? Five, ten? Excuse I, I, me? I would take a ballpark guess and say, yeah. oh, I would take a ballpark guess and I can say over a hundred. Over a hundred lots? Yes. Wow. And we have the list because that, you know, as soon as we, to mail out to all the landowners, however we go about this, I mean, I put together a letter, but I, I thought we should all oh, you know, okay. have the committee okay. and all. That was I how we were going to proceed with that at, at the, whatever point it be. Well, you know, it'd be, once you get once we, this thing gets passed, it would it'd be nice if we could make it as easy as possible for them. Just have a form letter, sign it, date it. Going back, bonding company. Going back to Mike's question about you know one per lot, and let's say Mike has a riverfront lot that, and I've got one that's six times that size. What is the minimum size? You know, if if I wanted to get six on mine, six of what is there? One, I mean, like a Zagrodnik box or something that we. Depending on the zone you're in, the way the bylaw is written, Mark. So the underlying zone. Either going to be a thirty thousand or forty thousand square foot minimum lot. Okay. Although many, uh, there are many non-conforming lots out there that could still support a trailer. No, there's the grandfathered ones, which can have one. But if I wanted to get multiple on mine, I'd have to justify that I met a certain number of that size, 30 or 40. Th yeah, okay. I'm not sure that, yeah, there's probably more to it than that because obviously the prime location is within sound of the water, sight and sound of the water. So the fact that you have six acres and 100 feet of frontage on the river I don't know is that means you really should have 16. No, right. yeah. They're all going to be clustered. Right. right. So area and frontage. River, river frontage is, is catamount on a lot of this stuff as far as how many law, how many trailers you can put on there. And some of that, as a practical matter, might be left up to the ZBA to uh, to work up. Uh, if it, if they if they felt they we needed to have some specific language in the bylaw, we can talk about that. But I think that um, you know some of the standards they'd be informed by the Board of Health, the Fire Department. There are probably regulations on how close RVs could be parked to each other. Maybe there aren't. Uh, it, it may have a lot to do with the propane tanks and stuff like that, too. Yeah. Yeah. Also, too, our bylaw says uh, it's uh, one trailer per lot. Does, don't we have that wording in there? Or yeah, do. Trailers are not permitted. 
We do. We do. We, we were just trying to be reasonable to someone who has, you know, yeah. let's, let's say t Tommy has a, a half a mile of, of riverfront and telling him he can only have one trailer on there and he can't have his cousins bring one. You know, doesn't exactly. Seem, doesn't seem fair. We don't want him having too much fun here. <laughs> one big example is, is Joe Fighting Kevitz, who was one of my mentors when I started, you know, as inspector in East Hampton. And he's there probably two to three weekends at his nephew's. And there's probably six campers there. So he, as soon as he heard about all this months ago, he called and said, you, you got your hands full. You got to do your job. Of, you know, what is my family going to do? So he's been, you know, what's going on? What's going on with it? And, and, you know, because he does, he goes for probably two, three nights, three times a year with his camper. And, you know, that's one of hundreds, you know, all along most likely. So it, it is going to be a challenge um, but we do have, so we have a, we have a, um, board of health, uh, Mr. Mish is going to be at the, uh, is on the, going to be on the committee. We have, um, Andrew Bombardier from ZBA, both fire chief, police chief, I mean, uh, fire chief and deputy. And we have two from conservation and then Mr. Dwyer, which you'll, you'll be here on it anyway, but that was the, you know, the committee, the select board had put out for some residents and, I don't know if they've ever gotten any feedback of, you know, anybody that they wanted to have on it. So there would, won't be any residents that I know of. So this is this is all about getting the, camp, the tra trailers along the river, river, Tom. Well, the, getting all the input, how we need to restrict it, you know, okay. and everybody's input. Okay. Um, you know, I keep hearing why can't we do every five thousand square feet have one, you know, things like that. And that's what you know, as a heads up, that's what we're gonna we're gonna hear from some of the committee members. Um, <laughs> Well, if, if you narrow it down, there are only about three families that have that kind of uh, mix. The rest are, are out of town people. For example, somebody mentioned to me that, uh, uh, who's the guy that does the towing with a big wrecker? Harold's wrecker comes in to bring one in and take it out every year. And I don't know if it's his personally, but that's one huge, huge recreational vehicle. That one would not be allowed. And a lot of those people are Northampton Hatfield people that I know that are there. And the reason is because Hampton and Hatfield don't allow them. And they're from all over. South Hadley, all Chicopee, South they're all Hadley. over. Oh, they're, they're yeah. down from Springfield. They're all over the yep. place here. Yeah, they were out of state. So that gets back to maybe allowing more than one by special permit from the ZBA. Um, yeah. And what if, if the CBA approves them all? If they wanted our guidance, I would say that each imaginary sublot for a RV would have to satisfy frontage and area so that you didn't get a triangle with very little frontage, but a lot of area, or you didn't get one that has very little area, but a lot of frontage, you know, you, you balance it. That's the that's where the box came from. Yeah. So if if that was a route we wanted to go down, we could establish some criteria like that for the ZBA. Yeah. Um, well, check with Ken to see if that would be too permissive. I mean, the thing regarding the the clarification that the board has made with regards to this definition and allowing recreational vehicles in the flood way, um, not the flood plain, but in the flood way, um, you know, it, there's nothing that says you can't, just as long as the board is not permitting or the, the building inspector is not permit, permitting um, foundation work or permanent foundations, this is fine. I think if the board is to, come up with standards as to how to assist the ZBA in determining whether or not you're gonna have you know, too many, um, if there are standards that you wanna explore that. It's not, it's not changing the intent of the bylaw in that the intent is to not have permanent construction in the floodway. This is a recreational vehicle. This, this, this section is specific to recreational vehicles. So because recreational vehicles are not permanent, you know, you'd be able to, to leave. Um, but I think for the purposes of understanding that these larger parcels may have, you know, it doesn't make sense that only one 
recreational vehicle would be on it if there is a standard that maybe the board wants to explore um you know th that that can be added here I how, many, how many axles did we say would be allowed is it one two, one 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 and how many axles is that big vehicle that you're just talking about say cover the three. guy the toe huh three three well The, I mean, I think Bill's got a good idea on the more than one special permit by the ZBA. And before we get too carried away and trying to uh, precede what they want, the meeting is tomorrow night, Tom? The select board is going to, yeah, I, I wrote a letter for them to accept the, the group or the Okay. Oh, so you don't have any meetings set up by that group yet? No, we had the board has to approve the, the committee. Okay. So once they get a meeting, then maybe, you know, let, let the planning board know and, you know, Bill's a representative on it. I would like to attend that meeting. And that would too. Yeah. And at least Great. let them, you know, throw around different ideas of what are possible and then we can change the bylaw before it goes to town meeting if there's something in it that makes sense, especially for the multiple trailers per lot. So at least there's some kind of a standard to go by. And also trailer size. I mean, that's an easy one to, to address, isn't that's, it, Tom? That's, that's already in the uh, state told us what we have to no, do. Tom's already in there, Mike. Pardon me? 400 square feet or less. Yeah, and a single yeah. axle trailer, it had to be towed by a pickup truck, basically. Right, that's already can, in the can I, can I ask a question? Mark Britton, where are you from? I'm, I, I'm, I own property on the river in Hadley. Um, I had a question about the Herald's towing tra trailers. Um, I, I know a lot about the river. Um, a, a heavy advocate on, on, you know, using the river and camping and boating and whatnot. I, I do a lot of cleanups and I know a lot of people on the river. Harold's Towing owns a piece of property they call it the racetrack over on the Northampton side. And they have class A motor homes, giant, you know, six figure motor homes that they, that they have over on the Northampton side. So, and, and I'm, and I'm really good friends with the family. So I'm, I'm just in question where this monster three axle camper is, um, being placed in Hadley because I, I have documentation on pretty much all the properties in Hadley and what's on the properties. I, I'm pretty resourceful. If, if anybody needs any, you know, uh, guidance, pictures, uh, documentation, I, I've collected that throughout the past couple of years because I'm, I'm concerned about, you know, losing my access to my property. To, I, have, um, I have three campers on my property and uh, it's on five eighths of an acre. So I'm I'm, I'm taking some really good, uh, some serious interest in what's going on with the town right now. Um, but, and then my other question is, you know, what, what differentiates, what, what, what's the difference between a camper that has one axle or two axles? I mean, I've seen small campers that have two axles. Um, it, the state has, the state has guidelines, uh, well, rules and regulations state, with, you know, that we have to wait, accept. So the state, so the state allows up to three campers. Um, I have, I have documentation from FEMA also saying that uh, FEMA doesn't um, regulate the amount of campers allowed on a property. Um, yes. I, I just, well, I, like I said, I'm just, I'm just getting, I'm getting concerned of what's. So Ken, so could, yeah, you, it, could you bring up that definition? Uh, we can yeah. share the screen, bring up the definition. Are you I, able to I am so not zoop. Go right. ahead. Oh, it's this one. Okay. Oh, no, not that one. Sorry. No, the definition of recreational yeah. vehicles. It's this one. Right here. Okay, so the um, for FEMA purposes and for the purposes of our current bylaw, which copied FEMA, a recreational vehicle is a vehicle that is built on a single chassis, 400 square feet or less when measured at the largest horizontal projection, designed to be self-propelled or permanently towable by a light-duty truck, and designed primarily not as a permanent dwelling, but as temporary living quarters for recreational, camping, travel, or seasonal use. 
That is straight out of the Code of Federal Regulations. That's what so, we're... So a camper, a, camper, a camper is no wider than 96 inches, in some occasions 101 inches wide. So you're, you're talking about a camper as big as a 40-foot fifth wheel camper trailer, which can have, you know, multiple axles underneath it. I don't, yeah, I don't that's see, right. it doesn't, it doesn't say anything about axles in that definition. Well, I just, I just heard axles being brought up saying oh, it can only be a single axle. I, I own a camper that's a, a double axle and it's, it's 380 square feet uh, in size. Well, that would work. I'm, I'm not sure where the axle can, but this is a single chair. I mean, we misspoke. We're just, I'm just talking about how big the uh, towing companies vehicle was the, the single chassis might have been misinterpreted as a single axle okay I, yeah i just wanted to get it clarified because now i'm well uh, you know i was getting nervous about that, having a single axle on my trailer Ken, i think we did see something about axles in a previous version but i don't yes I don't yes it did and that was uh, the, the state record recommended building code i'll try to look it up and see what section the state recommended the other question i had two with propane tanks, if if a camper has a, 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 a permanently installed propane tank system, like most campers have, twin thirty pound tanks, where where is the issue in the town if that is a DOT mandated um, setup on, that can that you know most campers are registered to go down the road, so that that's that's you know been cleared through the department of transportation and, and, and federal so why why all of a sudden do we have issues with propane tanks i mean the uh, fire chief has issues. Campers that you see that that is a that is a fire chief issue you you asked well, i mean wouldn't somebody it's not a zoning issue it's a fire chief issue and it it might would, not be wouldn't a barbie permanently attached I, well my next question wouldn't somebody's bar grill that was in the 200 foot floodplain be an issue also because that's a it's a similar propane tank i mean you have a a 20 again, pound bottle and you have a 30 pound bottle yeah, on campus again these are not zoning issues. issues these are fire department issues mark we're not trying to we're not trying to put you off we don't have an answer for that the propane tanks are a fire chief concern okay we can't we can't answer your question because we don't know all right that's fine i'll, I'll talk to the fire chief and, and okay. talk to him about it well, thank well, you and back to Ken, I, I found my notes in the recreation of vehicle is a built out of single uh, uh, axle, 400 no, square feet. Single chassis. Huh? Single chassis or it's single axle? Single chassis. Was it single chassis? Chassis. Yes, single chassis. Okay. 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 All right. I guess we beat this up pretty well, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's stressful being a property owner on the river, and uh, I've been there since 2013. I am I am from out of town. I'm from Holyoke, and that property that I own, that I pay taxes on, is my home away from home. I have um, young children that, that are, are my family and close friends friends that have children that when they're up there they're not on video games and social media they're fishing off my docks they're playing ball they're they're chasing the dogs around so uh and there's a lot of other people out there like me doing this and we're we, we tend to be river stewards and, and we try to make our places nicer and 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 you know keep the place clean and kind of police the river the river's been getting out of control and a lot of it is the daytime users you know on mitch's island I'm sure my name's been across plenty of your people, plenty of yours, your desks, because I, I, I tend to stir the pot and I apologize, but I just, you know, it's like my child. I don't have any kids and, and my piece of property is like my, is like my child. Tommy's been up there. He's seen it. It's, it's not, it's not a dump. It's not run down. And I think the majority of us that are out there um, strive to, to keep our places really nice. And Mark, if there's probably never been a problem on your property, nor will there probably ever be a problem on your property, but they don't care. And they, they need to make regulations because this is how they earn their salary, okay? They don't want you to have too much fun. Yeah, but th and that's and that's sad because like I said, in, in this in this day in this day 
day and age, um, you know, kids growing up, they, they don't leave their house, you know, and I, it, it's awesome that I have, you know, four or five young kids that are out learning stuff. I mean, we snowmobile, I have a house in Vermont in, in the, in the wintertime and we snowmobile, we take the kids up there. We have a blast and, and it's, and it's all about the kids and it's all about the family stuff. Uh, nowadays, the electronics, social media and, and, and yeah. putting the TV on it, it's, it's, it's poison. It's absolute poison. What else do you need out of us, Kim? Anything? Um, no, I think um, between either finessing this in any way to make it easy for the town to just cut and paste however you're going to draft your warrant article, because I know that you usually do that, if there is some clarification with regards to definitions, um, you know, I think the, the document shows what's being removed, what's being added. Um, I don't know if there is a format you want this in um, or if you want to take it, Jim, as you usually do with some of the, you know, these bylaw amendments um, and just present it however you want to for legal review. Great. Um, just, just send me the latest information, the latest way that you made a couple of changes to. Okay. I will take and clean it up into a single document and then pass it around. And then we can wait and see what happens with this committee that uh, to look at the at the vehicle the, the vehicles on the river, what they come up with any if there's anything that they come up, come up in time, we'll put it into the bylaw. If not, we'll have to amend it down the road again. Um, so, Jim, what I'll do is I'll um, give you both the version which shows the the strike through and underline, and then I'll give you an entire clean version, which is all of if if the town were to approve. Okay. The language what it would look like okay if there's any way you can come up with some way to allow the people that have been doing what they've been doing in some cases for generations and not bothering anybody figure it let us know will you i think you're dreaming i know it i know it but i wanted to get that out there these people aren't bothering anybody well i mean so, and, 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 so like, Someone may be able to make an argument that they're grandfathered for zoning purposes, but we still have to deal with conservation, board of health, yeah. fire department. Right. So yeah, this, this, this is, you know, there are a lot of things on the table here. So, uh, you know, I understand where you're coming from and it may take care of our area, but it won't solve the problems out there. And, you know, Kim, how are we doing on the maps? Um, I I have so I'll I think I'm gonna just send you. I I don't have the up the, the updated maps are not supposed to come until 2022, and I think as I mentioned at the last meeting, um, the the people that you probably met with in your community I I forget what the acronym is your CAC um, in 2018 or 2019. Um, and I think Joe, you were in that meeting. Yeah, um, Jim, and, Jim and I were. It was at the Joe yeah. Library in Amherst. Yeah. Um, and um, they'll be coming to the town, and they'll be going through a process of identifying the new map, and then as the town committee who would be responding to it, that would open up your process to the community to, you know, invite the people that probably would be affected by any new flood maps. So uh, do we anticipate that if passed, this bylaw will be in effect for this summer, this coming summer? Assuming the attorney general's office approves it. Yeah, if, if the meeting is in, the town meeting is in May, typically it's three months for the time of submittal before we hear back. So nah. probably not. No. But it relates well, back to the time of it. If it's approved, it relates back to the time of adoption. Actually, it relates back to the time of the first publication of the legal notice for the public hearing. Yeah. But so, yes. It, we, for Tom and his crew, and I, by that I mean the build, the Board of Health, et cetera, and, and the fire and police chief to get in, and a conservation to get involved, it would probably be a superhuman task to try to enforce it across the board this summer. If we approve it, 
it would be something that they would, I would guess they'd be working on for the 2022 year. And it would give the time to send out, you know, to all the property owners a notice and, 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 um, you know, because like the, I know that the chief's concern is just to have it noted, you know, what is there, how many tanks and what. It's not to stop them. He just wants to know where they are in case of a storm or, you know, in case of a disaster. Yeah. So, you know, this, it, it, there's some involved enforcement involved or involved application to this bylaw once it's formally approved again or amended. And, and Ken, I, I wish you would try to hurry it up because it'd be very difficult to adopt this new zoning amendment as the overlay district if we don't have up-to-date maps. And uh, if all of a sudden we adopt this and then somebody's surprised, surprised by land is in it, their vote may be different. Well, this article has nothing to do with adopting the overlay district. This well, is I just know it regulations. For it's, it's, it's part of the transparency to use a well-coined phrase. Uh, and the uh, section we're working on is all riverfront, so we know those are all affected already. Okay. Yeah, and I think what, what's gonna be helpful when you, you put this to town meeting is sharing what your current maps look like because it still does refer to those maps. The, the, there you. will be a requirement once new maps are adopted that there'll be a bylaw amendment to change that language for the new map. Um, that is probably where there may be, you know, a discussion. Okay, that, that makes sense then. Yes, go by the present ones. Anything else? Negative. Thank you, Ken. I, did, I don't know if, um, Bill, you got this, this line, um, notification there is a new grant program that was just released today it's um through the one stop it's it's covid money um for plans um and zoning planning and zoning items um i'll share that with the board um but yeah please do i don't recall getting okay. anything today but uh, okay yeah i'll share that with board i mean it's a it's a quick turnaround um but if there's any assistance that you need to help put that together um, I can assist. Um, so I think it could be helpful for housing um, if that's something that you want to look at, among other things. But so I think looking forward, I, obviously there's a, some work to do to get this trimmed up. But it looks like the the other outstanding thing is MS4 compliance. Is the um, the MS4 regulations. regulations regulations? Yeah. So. Um, what I'll do is because um, my colleague was the one leading that, um, and I, I think if anything, have her reach out, and I'll probably you know just just reintroduce the the, the topic, um, but have her coordinate a meeting um, with that group that met just to tie any loose ends, um, and then the planning board would oversee um, you know adopting them, but. Um, that that's probably going to be my um, next step is just to reintroduce that the MS4 regulations have not yet been adopted, and there's some loose ends that need to be you know tied um, with DPW and conservation and and those folks that were part of the initial process. But I'll go ahead okay. and do that. Want to schedule our next meeting? Yeah. Um, that, that probably you, for the MS4 or for another, just, just the general information with you. Oh yeah, that's fine. Whatever, whatever we have going on. Yeah, that's great. Um, whenever, uh, I am, my Mondays are for you whenever you normally are scheduled. So if it's a standing meeting, you know, and you foresee that you may have some, vacancies, no, no public hearing scheduled. So how about the second meeting of March? Great. 16th. And yeah, I don't, I don't think Kevin's gonna, Kevin is not gonna wanna have a meeting on that, but he's probably gonna ask for another continuance. And Ken, I wanna thank you for sending the information along to us, the other three members on the board. And uh, it's really been helpful, especially with this uh, floodplain overlay district to 
get up there. Yeah, thanks, Ken. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah, so, and I'll continue to, as I share, um, you know, that documentation, I now have the note to share with the entire board. So you'll get everything that. Ken, Ken I'm just curious, get, getting back to the uh, riverfront thing. Uh, so Northampton does not allow recreational vehicles on the riverfront. But we were just told by Mr. Britton that somebody's doing that. How can that possibly happen? I'm being rhetorical. <laughs> <laughs> the thing with the thing with recreational vehicles is it is not something that is forbid like it's not prohibit. It's not a prohibited use. Um, so I'm, you know, if Northampton is not requiring any permitting. Um, I don't know how their bylaw is written, yeah. um, but with regards to recreational vehicles, I don't know how they can prohibit that based on the way the language. Well, theme of so so Northampton perhaps doesn't have a bylaw similar to ours saying you've got to get a special permit. Maybe they don't even address it. Perhaps they don't even address it. Right. So, so it, people it, it, still, but people but people are doing it anyway. Well, Michael. Uh, if you drive along the hemp meadows where uh, Parsons has corn and Swazlowski's have potatoes, I have never seen a camper there from all the way from the bridge to Rainbow Beach, all the way up. So, so this, this may be someplace in a different area that I'm not aware of. No, I, I, have, I, I have, I have, I have I've photographs seen on the of, side. I have photographs of campers lined along the Northampton side. Yeah. I, I'm actually good friends with people that own multiple yeah. properties in Northampton that have multiple campers. We're talking eight to 10 campers on their lots. So I, if, if, if somebody on the board needs proof, I can provide that. Where no is problem. Mark, no. Just tell almost, me where it is. You know where Sandy Beach is in Hadley? Yes. Almost directly across from Sandy Beach, Harold used to put his RV out there. You he Definitely. still he still does. They they put out RVs. There's six to ten. Um, they're not there all summer long. They come for the weekends. But like I said, there's six figure RVs that are out there. Six to ten of them. They have a container with a generator there that they run because they can't get power brought in there. So they have a great big diesel generator that powers all the campers. They don't have river access, but up there they they're up there. I mean, like I said, I can provide photographs. From Rainbow Beach North to the Coolidge Bridge, there's there's campers scattered all along there. So I, I suspect the issue is that Northampton's bylaw is probably written like ours, which says only item, only activities that are permitted by this bylaw are allowed, and if it's not permitted, it's not allowed. So I I have talked to the Northampton Planning Director, and he said that they do not allow campers along the river, meaning they have no bylaw permitting campers along the river. Um, so technically they are not allowed, but it's not being enforced over there. Yeah. And, and so. Hatfield, Hatfield's the same thing. And in fact, Hatfield, the, the amount of campers grew last year. There was 13 more campers than the previous year in Hatfield. So, so Kim, does, do Northampton and and uh, Hatfield have to adopt this FEMA regulation and amend their bylaw if they don't have a bylaw? They, I mean, they have to, if there are changes with regards to some of the language that you've changed in your bylaw, again, the 13, section 13.7 was the clarification of the requirement that RVs would need to get a special permit for the Z, from the ZBA. Well, you know, we're, we're going through questions. all these hoops and, and whatever, Maybe it'd be just better off to get rid of the bylaw. Then, then we have to get rid of the campers. If they're not allowed, well, they're well, prohibited. Well, yes, just like Northampton has to get rid of the campers or Hatfield. But then we have to enforce it because now we have a problem. Yeah. But clearly it's not being enforced in Northampton or Hatfield. Well, this Mike, Mike, I disagree a little bit with Mark. I, I don't want to tell you how many pieces of property I have at Hatfield along the river. And certainly I know at that one section from the, uh, from where the school that's being renovated all the way down the river to the basin, there's three uh, houses there that are grandfathered in, but there are no campers there that I, I'm aware of. 
So unless they bring them in on the weekend and take them away. No, okay. there's, there's, there's permanent, there's permanent sites in Hatfield. In fact, I'm friends um, with a family that has six on a site. Their last name is Ball. They're from Southampton. Um, that's just one site. If you Google earth it, I, I'm not good with the internet and zoom and stuff, but if you Google earth it, you can actually see images of campers spread all along the river, uh, Northampton, all the way up, all the way up through Hatfield. Um, in fact, there's a couple in Sunderland, but I, I haven't, I can't really get up there with my boat because of the shallowness. So I, I don't have a count for you up in Sunderland. So oh, Ken, uh, there's one other thing. If you could hang on for a second. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I, I put on the agenda at 3C, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 3D. I attended the select board meeting two weeks ago and um, there was uh, some discussion of, of maybe <clears throat> Revisiting some of the long-range plan implementation recommendations. Okay. So um, I don't know. I know. I know we can dust those off our, ourselves, but um, I can. I can look at the file. It's similar to um, what we were doing with with regards to the planning board's work plan. I'm sure that. Right, and it, it, that was where we drew uh, one of the. Um, uh, there was a grant application. We drew language from the master plan uh, from the implementation section. But uh, the select board is interested in working with us on doing some implementation of the master plan. Great. Um, and I know there was an appendix that had uh, that had a uh, had homework assignments, and we haven't visited that for a while, so. I'm going to leave this on the agenda as sort of a standing item. Um, but if you've got a chance, maybe to pull a couple of pages, pull the, that, pull that section and send it around, uh, yeah. that would be great. Okay, Bill, good. once again, when people start referring to, well, the master plan mentions this, the master plan has probably 16 or 20 recommendations in the order of which the town would like to see implementation. If somebody picks from number 16, we should not just automatically assume no, that because the town adopted something like that, they can pick number 16. Well, maybe we should go through one, two, three, and four. Well, exactly. And that's why we kept management of implementation, but we haven't been doing it. So now we have to start doing it. So uh, Ken will get us, uh, we'll revisit that and we'll, uh, we'll dust it off and... Uh, as I said, I'm just going to leave it on here as a standing item, so we can take it up as time permits. But uh, yeah, we can we can control the order that those are taken up. Um, affordable housing trust fund. Well, this isn't so much affordable housing trust fund, but uh, three of us attended uh, a Chapter 40B workshop. Uh, I know Mike and I did. Uh, Mark, did you make it? I, I did as well. A, a couple of them I was driving, so I only heard it. I didn't get to see the the uh, screen, but yeah. So one that was interesting was uh, a town on the North Shore um, has a, a formula for, and they have a lot more apartments. And they have a formulas for how much you, you pay in lieu of, uh, for affordable apartments versus affordable condos. Um, and they charge, the closer you get to the beach, if you wanna not put an affordable unit on your beachfront property, it's gonna cost you a lot more than not putting in an affordable unit on your other side of town property. Um, I shared that with Mike. Yeah. So we may, we may when we're thinking about how we're gonna do our regulations implementing the affordable housing buyout. Yeah, and I, I, look, I looked at it real quickly. I just did like an envelope calculation. I said, it seems to be within the ballpark. And when I said within the ballpark, I meant that crazy formula that I came up with, you know? So that, that's something promising. We may tinker with that a little bit. Uh, maybe I'll try to remember to send that to you, Ken, as well. Great, thanks. Um, Route 9 reconstruction issues, I uh, am, um, haven't gotten a letter out to town, uh, email out to town council yet. Um, I wanted to bump it ask the town administrator. Um, so um, 
that'll go out shortly. Uh, I don't think we have anything on procedures. We've done bills of correspondence. Um, so I think that covers. Just a quick question. Any landowner in Hadley can come to town meeting, meeting, but they can't vote if they're not a resident, correct? Right. Yes, correct. Cannot vote and cannot cannot address town meeting without per vote without a majority vote permission from town meeting. Okay. Okay. So, so even if we own property in Hadley, we still can't do for this meeting. You can come to the meeting, but you can't vote. So even though that we pay taxes, because I can verify everything that Mark said about all the campers on the yes. river towards Hadfield, Hadley, all going up towards Sunderland. That is correct. Only Hadley residents will be voting on this bylaw. That's the same in any place in the state of Massachusetts. You must be a resident to vote in that town. Unless you can prove you've been living on the river more than 181 days. You're going, to be, no, you're, going to, you're going to be a resident of the town. So that, so my property on the river, like Mark said, is my second home. Oh, you're, you're doesn't dead. matter. You're going to be a registered resident of the town and a registered voter. You're going to be a registered voter of the town to vote at town meeting. That's a state law. Uh, I have nothing else. Well, I, I just, I just, I just tried sharing a screen of uh, the Northampton side. I don't know if, if did anybody get that or did it go through? No, it, it came through. So that 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 shows on a Google Earth image um, of, of the you know the campers on the Northampton side. I can I can probably uh, find a Google Earth of Hatfield also, just to you know rest my case on whether there are campers in other towns. No. Yeah, again, that really doesn't address Hadley zoning. So um, we, we do have a update from KP Law. Bill sent it around on changes to um, voting at town meetings on adopting certain zoning amendments. And basically, if you're going to be dealing with affordable housing, you go you the state has changed their requirements from a two-thirds majority to a simple majority to a simple majority. So in other words, 51 percent, anything over 50 percent, if you have 51 percent of the uh, voting body is in favor of it and votes accordingly, the bylaw would pass. Hey, I got a quick question for you. You guys want to keep getting all these permits and all that for the fire department and board of health and blah, blah, blah. Now, what happens if this doesn't pass? Now, nobody that owns property on a river can bring their camper there and camp for the summertime, or we just... Say that again? If, if this doesn't pass, we go back to the more restrictive former version of the bylaw. So pretty much that we're not going to be able to camp on the river this summer. You can get a special permit from the ZBA the former, the old version of the bylaw says that everybody needs a special permit from the ZBA to have a right. Camp. I realize that the new but version I'm just says what's going on for the summertime. New version says you'll only need a, Z, a special permit from the ZBA if you want to be in the flood way, the most dangerous part of the flood zone. If you want to be in the flood plain, you'll go to the building inspector. Uh, who will have a form to fill out, an application, you know, name, okay. rank, serial number. All right. So now you guys were talking about a couple of weeks ago, um, 200 feet from the waterfront. Yes. Now, where are you considering the waterfront from? So where the, the river would be like normally all summertime to your I camper? Don't know. The, the 200 foot is a riverfront uh, statue. Yeah. And that relates to uh, that's the, under the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission. And it's a FEMA map will indicate it too. Does that does that include the height too? Like if you're up high, uh, I don't, I don't, closer to the water. 
the, the Conservation Commission has jurisdiction 200 feet inland uh, from all flowing water in town, navigable or otherwise, under the State Rivers Act. We don't know if that means that you would have to be back 200 feet. We aren't sure what the 200 foot would mean. The Conservation Commission will be making those determinations. This is a very complex issue. We're not trying to pass, pass you off or blow you off, if anything like that. But this being be, the, the state has very complex requirements on doing things within certain dimensions of a bona fide waterway. And that absolutely applies to the Connecticut River. Yeah, because like I said, I was just wondering where you guys are considering the 200 feet. Yeah. Yep. That, yeah that, that's the Conservation Commission. We, we, aren't, we don't know. We don't know the answer to that. We're not even sure it will, will apply to the putting a, a, a RV on the river. We don't know. Tommy mentioned that um, they were looking for a couple of residents in the town of Hadley to be on the special committee that you guys are forming. Um, I actually threw out a couple of names and people were interested. And um, you have to be a town resident, obviously, to be on the committee also. Because, I, I mean, I, I know myself or Lionel would, would be interested, but I, I know... Um, Sally Linkowski, she's a resident of Hadley. She she uh, expressed some interest in being on it, and um, I had I had uh, Johnny Mitch Jr. He said he he would ex express some interest in being on that also. Yeah, so. I, I don't I don't think you should have to be a town resident. Hell, the town the town manager lives in Long Meadow for crying out loud. Okay, that's not our call. <laughs> that's right. the select board's call. Don't decide tomorrow night. Okay. Well, yeah, I just, I, I just don't want to see, you know, um, people, you know, town residents um, not able to participate in something like this when you guys offered it. So I, I definitely have some names that would be interested in it. Okay, so, uh, you know, be in contact with the select board office or the town administrator. Okay, this, thank you. This just, just bring, brings back Tip O'Neill's old adage that all politics is local. I think that if you're a committee appointed by the select board, you can have non-resident -re members, but they won't be voting members. So you Great. can- Yeah, have, good point. So you can be heard and you can be there, but you're not a voting member if you're not a resident. That's what we were experiencing on the diversity committee. And Mark, have those, uh, Mr. Britton, have them do that tomorrow um, early because they're, the meeting's tomorrow night. So they should okay. you know, email them directly in the morning. If All right, yeah. yeah, thank you, Tommy. Appreciate it. <laughs> hey, I got one more quick question. Is he in it? It's Lionel. He's on my phone. <laughs> it's Janet, Janet Stone. I called her over two weeks ago, and I talked to her personally. Uh, she was supposed to send me the rules of the river. And I've never received one piece of paper from the rules of the river for over a year now. I pay my taxes every year and all that. And she was supposed to send me link emails for the people that were supposed to contact. And it, like I said, it's been over two weeks and I never got a piece of paper or those emails, the people that were supposed to contact. So like me and Mark, we can get this ball rolling a little bit to find out what's going to be happening in May if we're still allowed to go to the river with our campers. What do you mean rule rules? What you what, what are you talking? What kind of rules is the river are you talking about? It's, the an old, it's an old sheet that I found in the in the building department. Um, it, it it's outdated and all. I'm sure that's probably. I, I can't speak for her, but until this committee you know is formed and you know the planning board, everybody's under agreement. Um, those are just an old, old set that, you know, whether they're even adopted, I don't know. That was just an old set that, uh, she, she, had put said, out. she had said she sent out a letter to all riverfront property owners last year and we never, ever received it. And then she was going to send us the links for all the permits or whatever we had to do 
the people that we have to, the people that we have to contact and I still haven't received nothing. Well, I know I had I have a list. The assessor went through and spent a lot of time. So when we do finally send, you know, whatever letter be out, I have the list now that um, Dan has spent a lot of time to make sure he had everybody. So um, feel free to e email my office even, um, you know, with it, just in case you're not, you know, for some reason you weren't on that list. But until yes. we you know, do something else up. Because I know a couple of people on the river mm -hmm. and I've talked to them and they all gotten those letters and I never received one. You know, the, the just there is a bylaw in town about trailers, recreational vehicles along the, the river. And all you have to do is be aware of the bylaw. And if you are not aware of the bylaw, it's not our fault. You cannot build a house just because you are not aware that you can build a house in wherever you want. And the same thing with your trailers. The, there is a bylaw and you can go online and read it. And just because the, it wasn't enforced previously uh, doesn't mean you have the right to do it. So uh, it's ignorance is no excuse, actually. So regarding the Conservation Commission, all uh, you know, they don't work for us. We don't work for them. So um, all I can suggest is you keep on trying to reach Janice Stone. Uh, I know she is only... Well, basically, town hall is close to the public and the staff is encouraged to work from home. And I believe she's only working for the Conservation Commission one day a week anyway. So uh, just keep on trying to reach her. That's all I can suggest. Now, now, who do I get a hold of at the fire department? Obviously, it's going to be the chief to find out for these propane bottles. Mike's now, is, Mike's now is there a special station I have to call to Mike, talk to him? Mike Spank and Abel. What was that? Go to the uh, HadleyMA.org fire department, non-emergency number. Yep. That's the only way I know how to reach him. Do you have the phone number? No, I don't have it handy. Okay. The HadleyMA.org, go to the fire department and you'll, they'll have the number. Okay. Now, what was that other gentleman's email address I was talking to before? Who? He said Tommy we can email him. He said I could email him. Uh, the building commissioner? Yeah, yes, you. Inspections at hadley.org. Hadleyma.org. <laughs> Ma.org. Thank you. And, and, the, and the Hadley Fire Department's number is 413-584-0874. 584-0874. But don't trust us. Go online. It's right there. Not that Mike would purposely give you the wrong number. The only reason I got the number is for spring burning. Make sure I can get a permit that day. Oh, you're giving them the busy number. <laughs> All right. Move. We adjourn. Anybody else have anything? Nope. Motion to adjourn. Do you have a second? second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Meeting us history. Thank you and thank you for participating, people. And thank you, John. <laughs>